Hi kitty cats, uh, another episode of uh, Women in Science. Uh, today we're going to be uh, reading about Nettie Stevens. Uh, she's a geneticist, okay? And so she was born in 1861 in Vermont. So she's an American. Uh, and what is she? She changed how we study embryo and cytogenetics is what cytogenetics right she discovered that sex is determined by um, x and y y chromosomes and she was one of the first women in america to be recognized for her biology research so she's another uh, scientist that has contributed to our understanding of the world miss Stephen. Miss Stevens had a share in a discovery of importance and her work will be remembered for this. Thomas Hunt Morgan. Okay, so her name is Nettie Stevens. Nettie Stevens was born in 1861 in Vermont. She pinched pennies to pay for her education and often taught classes to help pay her way. She had a very long road to follow to get to her short but groundbreaking career. Nettie slowly finished her undergrad education at the newly formed Stanford University in California. After earning her master's degree, her interest in genetics brought her back to the East Coast, where she received her PhD at Bern Mawr College at the age of 41. The big question in genetics at the time was a simple one. What makes a baby a girl or a boy? At the time, sex determination was a still a mystery. For centuries, doctors thought sex was determined by what a woman ate during pregnancy or how warm she kept her body. Nettie and other scientists had their suspicions that there were more to sex determination than that. Nettie got to work by dissecting bugs. She took the sex organs from butterflies and mealworms to look at the cells under a microscope. Male insects had an XY shape chromosomes and females had an XX. Her flawless technique and use of different kinds of bugs strengthened the hypothesis she, she made based on her observations. In 1905, she published her groundbreaking research in a two-part book, which overturned hundreds of years of misconceptions. Around the same time, Edmund Wilson, Nettie's former advisor, made the same discovery of XY chromosomes in his own, but Nettie's work had the strongest proof. She wrote about her findings with great scientific conviction, but it was received by a skeptical public. Unfortunately, her untimely death in 1912 has rendered her largely overlooked and forgotten. We now recognize Nettie for her amazing work, which allowed scientists to better understand sex determinations and genetics. She, ha she, she, used, uh, she also used fruit flies and beetles in her studies. Her dad was a carpenter her historic work was called Studies in Spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis, that's what it's called. Travel to Italy and Germany to study cytology. To make sure their baby would be a boy, people used to try to con conceive in the summer, and it didn't work. <clears throat> Nobel Prize winner Thomas Morgan's work was possible because of Nettie's research. 
So there's here's another woman contributing to the uh, biology and our understanding of genetics. Uh, this is really important for us to read these stories because many uh, women's contribution has been uh, overlooked by history. And now we're just starting to understand how much women has contributed to our understanding, especially in science and math and philosophy, because that those are currently the field in the United States that uh, women believe that they're not good at. But here are stories of many women that has led the way. So especially for my nieces, I, um, I wanted to make sure that you can be anything you want to be. And you can be a scientist, mathematician, philosopher, engineer. Okay? Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Mwah.